Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. This means a lot to me. Um, this is the end of the, of the series of lectures that I gave here. Um, the uh, It's called Music Enlightenment. The first, uh, just a, a little review, the first lecture was expression in music, expression found in music, perceived in music, as opposed to evoked um, in us, which would be the, the short lecture today. Um, we studied uh, the two main main schools of thought in music philosophy, formalism and expressionism. Uh, formalism doesn't believe that music can express anything except maybe for its, um, the, real, the musical realm itself. They can express uh, the patterns of music, its phrasing, um, as opposed to expressionism that can express emotions, um, meaning, movement, memories. Uh, and we study two ways, two methods of uh, expression uh, that we find in music. Uh, prosody, which is the intonation and the rhythm of the voice. Uh, and we seem to associate music to that and give that meaning. Uh, we also find it in movement. Uh, when we listen to music, uh, pure music or instrumental music, for instance, we, in, we seem to invoke images in our head and most of these um, are in motion. We see uh, music rising and falling or expanding. Um, in, our, in our second lecture, uh, Symbolism, uh, we realize that for ages music has, has reflected or referenced another realm, one in which in incantations and ritual is possible. Uh, in the Middle Ages, music on earth would parallel music in the realm of heaven, for instance. And it was also, music was also used as symbols to represent the Trinity and angelic singing through uh, ornamentation. Uh, Mozart uses music as symbol uh, in Freemasonry and uses it in his opera, The Magic uh, Flute, for instance, to reflect the power of three. Uh, Beethoven, in his Ninth Symphony, symbolizes transformation and it uses, he uses this by the juxtaposition of uh, minor and major keys. And so he's able to um, convey this um, despair, heroism, and triumph. And finally, uh, Susan Langer would believe that music sounds the way emotions feel. So music is used as a metaphor, probably the only metaphor, to emotions. Uh, and our third one, um, knowledge in music, we realize that music is really in us, um, especially your, the, the music in your own culture. We are able to follow, to understand the meanings in music um, because we've been listening to it since birth. Uh, we also spoke about performance intelligence and how musicians such as the orchestra, um, their knowledge is not verbal but procedural. It's, it's uh, practical. It's manifested in the actions themselves. And finally, uh, music bestows knowledge of how our mind works how it creates worlds and environments through music. We conceive order and meaning in oral patterns. We understand music when we grasp its meanings. Uh, one, quote, one quote by um, Robert Jourdain um, I really like. He says, to say that music makes our minds momentarily more capable is to say it makes us more intelligent. So now, uh, today's lecture, it's gonna be a really short lecture so we can get to the fun stuff. Um, it'll be emotion in music, and that means emotion invoked in us by music, as opposed to our first lecture. Um, I will base this short lecture on one study um, by Patrick Justin and Daniel Bastjall called Emotional Responses to Music, The Need to Consider Underlying Mechanisms. They present six mechanisms that may allow emotions to be invoked through music, brainstem reflexes, evaluative conditioning, emotional contagion, visual imagery, episodic memory, and musical expectancy. 
The main topic of the report is really how emotions are induced by music. Emotions in general, I'm sorry, em emotions in a general sense are evoked when an event seems to have the capacity to alter a person's goals in any way. This concept sometimes is called cognitive appraisal. If music does have the capacity to alter a person's goals, how is it emotional? The authors remind that we must look past appraisal theory and focus on less obvious methods of emotion of induction. I'm sorry, emotion induction. According to them, music does invoke emotions and they present the following example to give a sense of what type of event these mechanisms might represent. A common event like this can show just how, in a short moment, many emotions can be invoked through music. Quote, cause arrives just in time for the concert on Friday evening. He sat down and the music began. A sudden dissonant chord induced a strong feeling of arousal, brainstem reflex, causing his heart to beat faster. Then when the main theme was introduced, he suddenly felt happy for no apparent reason, evaluative conditioning. In the following section, the music turned more quiet. The sad tone of a voice-like cello that played slow, legato, Falling melody with a trembling vibrato, moving to experience the same sad emotion as the music expressed. Emotional contagion. He suddenly recognized the melody. It brought back a nostalgic memory from an event in the past where the same melody had occurred, episodic memory. When the melody was augmented by a predictable harmonic sequence, he started to fantasize about the music, conjuring up visual images like a beautiful landscape. Visual imagery. Next, the music structure began to build up towards what he expected to be a resolution of the tension of the previous notes when suddenly the harmonics changed unexpectedly to another key, causing his breathing to come to a brief halt, musical expectancy. He thought, this piece of music is really a cleverly constructed piece. It actually made me reach my goal to forget my trouble at work. Regarding this goal, made him happy. I'm sorry, reaching this goal made him happy, cognitive appraisal. So now let me really quick just um, give a little bit of an explanation for each one. Uh, brainstem reflex. The study suggests, quote, this refers to a process whereby an emotion is induced by music because one or more fundamental acoustic characteristics of the music are taken by the brain, by the brainstem, to signal a potential important and urgent event, unquote. Sounds that reflect dissonance or loudness or suddenness can feel uneasy and thus physically affect this ancient structure of the brain that deals with auditory perception, heart rate, attention, emotional arousal, breathing, and movement. Quote, sensory dissonance is suggestive of danger and natural and, I'm sorry, and movement. Um, in natural environments because it occurs in the threat and warning calls of many species of animals. Dissonance may thus have been selected by evolution as an unlearned negative reinforcer of behavior." Unquote. Second, evaluative conditioning. Quote, a process whereby an emotion is induced by a piece of music simply because this stimulus has been paired repeatedly with other positive or negative stimulus. Unquote. In this instance, the music could have been played repeatedly throughout a happy event in the past, for instance, and not for the happy emotion to be recalled simply by the sound of the music. Sometimes the music is judged by the listener to be poor quality. However, because of its conditioning to a joy joyful event, hearing the piece can be considered pleasant regardless of the artistic value. A significant trait of evaluative conditioning in music is its persistence, because conditioning apply strong emotional events. Because of this, it is difficult for such music to become extinct or forgotten, since the feeling was strong enough for the association to happen and consequently the persistent recall of such emotion. The same can happen with negative conditioning where the music invokes unpleasant feelings to the point of rejecting any association with such music, such as similar musical type, musical era, and so on. Third, Emotional contagion, sometimes associated with mirror neurons. Quote, a process whereby an emotion is induced by a type of music where the listener perceives the emotional expression of the music and then mimics this expression internally, 
which by means of either peripheral, uh, peripheral feedback from muscles or a more direct activation of the relevant emotional representations in the brain leads to an induction of the same emotion." Unquote. This concept can be experienced by the emotions we perceive in others and thus catch such emotions, for instance, in their facial or vocal expressions. Therefore, a feeling can be induced by the perceived emotion in another person. Quote, it has been argued that emotional contagion facilitates the mother-infant bond as well as social interaction in general. In support, such contagion seems to create affiliation and liking, which is arguably beneficial for social interaction." Unquote. As I mentioned in the first lecture, the prosody of the human voice, which is the intonation and rhythm of it, is, as we experience, very musical. We seem to be stimulated by the voice-like traits of music, and it can lead us to, quote, mimic the perceived emotion internally. A great advantage that music has, as we discussed, is the range with which it can be expressive. The range of the voice obviously lacks. So, if we perceive anger in the intonation of a human voice, a violin, for example, can reach a higher volume and a wider range and therefore will seem overly emotional. Fourth, visual imagery. Quote, a process whereby an emotion is induced by a listener because he or she conjures up visual images such as a beautiful landscape while listening to the music. The emotions experienced are the result of a close interaction between music and images." Unquote. Visual imagery in music seems to be a metaphorical attempt to associate music, for example, to extra musical reference such as movement, in which the listener perceives the sounds to rise or descend, to expand or compress. Other traits invoking visuals in music can be repetition of melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic elements. Visual imagery seems to be conjured up at will. A good example of this are the images our mind creates or calls, or calls for during listening to instrumental music, the patterns and relations we find in it, the dimensions we visualize through the listening process. Five, episodic memory. Quote, a process whereby an emotion is induced in the listener because the music evokes a memory of a particular event in, a, in the listener's life. This is sometimes referred as to, to the darling, they're playing our song phenomenon, unquote. This experience takes place when a memory is evoked and the emotion attached to that memory is simultaneously recalled as well. Quote, such emotions can be rather intense, perhaps because the physiological reaction patterns to the original events are stored in memory along with the exper experiential content, unquote. Most of these events are purposefully evoked through music in order to remember occurrences in our past as opposed to evaluative conditioning, where one might not have a choice in the matter. One important trait of episodic memory is that most people tend to remember events from their youth or early adulthood, presumably because it is during those years that self-defining experiences happen. This music is especially relevant to the development of self-identity. This might explain why older adults still prefer the music they listen to in their adolescent days. It conjures up memories of their youth, and they recall it because it happened during a, great, during a greatly emotional self-defining stage in their life. It can also explain why nostalgia is one of the most common responses to music. And six, musical expectancy. Quote, a process whereby an emotion is induced in a listener because a specific feature of the music violates, delays, or confirms the listener's expectations about the continuation of the music. Unquote. <laughs> In other words, it is, it is continuation and discontinuation of the musical structure. Quote, like language, music consists of perceptually discrete elements organized into hierarchically structured sequences according to well formedness rules. Thus, it is a common view among music theorists to, uh, that most music styles are in principle describable by grammar. It is only through the perception of the syntax that the music expectations arise. Unquote. As a result, an unexpected change of key or rhythm can disrupt the acquired understanding of the form, causing an emotional reaction. Neurophysiologically speaking, the same brain areas for musical structure violations have been implicated by violations of syntax and language. Consequently, emotion is likely to be caused by a disruption of specific expectations in the music we listen to. 
So these are the six mechanisms, um, and they've been suggested by Justin and Basquiat to be explored further by uh, neuroscientists. It's apparent that each mechanism has merit on its own, and that each can give us enough evidence to continue the research of emotion involved by music. This study already has its critics, which is great because we can work on the concepts that need more exploration. It isn't enough, as they mentioned, to agree that music does indeed cause feelings in us, but we need to know why that is so. I think the more we find out why, the more we'll experience music with understanding. Not just of reactions to sound, but how the human mind creates through a neural stimulant, thus continuing to explore the human experience. With this last lecture on emotion, we can encapsulate the rest of the lecture topics we've been, um, sorry, we've been shown, for example, that with emotional contagion, we can detect expression in the music itself by way of prosody, and we can associate a musical melody with the intonation of the human voice. We see how, through visual imagery, we can conceive movement in the music and imagine patterns that rise or descend, for instance. Same with movement, we conceive motion in music as a metaphor that can be used as a symbol to refer to extra musical concepts. And finally, with musical expectancy, we utilize the musical knowledge already in us to navigate a piece of music by the way of mentally organizing hierarchically structured sequences familiar to us. And understanding these causes anticipation. Their disruption can allow an emotional response. I hope you found these lectures valuable, and I have at least to an extent widened your perception, allowing a more informed and conscientious music listening in the future. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to present to you the Orange County Guitar Orchestra. for us to be here. I'd like to thank the university and to Juan for, for inviting us. Uh, we're going to share some music to you with you this evening. <laughs> share some music to you. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, it's not conflicted upon you, I hope. Uh, we're going to start with some pieces from, uh, from the Balkan area of Europe. The first one is a Bulgarian toccata uh, by Veselin Soyanov. It consists of outer movements of Bigger and energy with a tender, slower section. Mm -hmm. 
by one of Greece's most famous composers, Mons Hatsidakis. It's uh, a piece that's full of imagery. The, it, it's actually a song. The lyrics go, the moon is red, the river is light blue, and in, my, in your hands, my love, is uh, a snow white dove. The river is green, the, I'm sure it was not green. <laughs> uh, the moon is green, the river is deep, Come, my love, and dance until dawn. Then the moonlight comes and goes over the depths of the river, and my love glows golden like the flame on a candle. Come, my love, and dance until dawn. Thank you. 
Impressionistic piece by a Japanese group composer Hirokazu Sato. It's called The Song of Clouds and it graphically describes and evokes images of clouds in their different guises the turbulent clouds or storm clouds of summer, the sunset clouds that are red in the distance, and then the flowing rivers of clouds.
talking about the power of music to elicit memories and feelings from, from long ago. This may be the very first piece of classical music I ever heard. Uh, when I was in so hot, I uh, was with my grandfather and he would listen to the radio, listening to radio dramas, one of which was the FBI story. And this was the theme music for it. And so whenever I hear this, I remember so this is the march from the Love for Three Oranges by Sergei Prokofiev. Thank you. 
Nikita Koshkin is from a later generation of Russian uh, composers, but he was much influenced by Prokofiev. So you'll see a lot of similarities in his music, harmonically, rhythmically, stylistically, with the Prokofiev that we just played. This first piece, Elegy, is maybe one of the most emotional pieces that I've seen written for guitar orchestra. It evokes uh, a, just a wide variety of different reactions to grief. And the second one, Moin Moin, is a complete opposite. To me, it sounds like Russian circus music. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Enrique Granados wrote this next piece uh, especially for the New York debut of his opera Goyescas. And it was the last piece he wrote because return, it was in 1914 and returning from that to his home in Spain, his boat was torpedoed and, and sunk. So it's the last piece he wrote.
next set is eight short vignettes depicting scenes in Spain, um, focusing on festivals and celebrations.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
cities in Spain, and this is his serenade, a tribute to the southern Spanish city of Granada.
would like to leave you with something happy. This is uh, a Vietnamese piece called Trong Vam. It's a, a, a celebration of the rice harvest, and it was arranged for us by Dot Nguyen. Um, afterward, if you're so inclined, we do have some CDs for sale, and <laughs> so see, see these fellows in the back if you're interested in CDs. <coughs>